So you wanna buy some vacant land and build on it in the future. This video is built around what you need to think about prior to going out and buy that land. What's up, BK here, and I'm gonna give you some tips that I've got around buying land. Okay, so first off, the purchase of the land. Here's some important facts. What area, what's important to you? Do you need to be close to Costco, the hospital, the airport? Um, geographically, uh, do you wanna be up higher, lower? Uh, also, something to think about is the different counties and their building restrictions. Are, is it harder to build in that one county? And how much time is it gonna take me eventually to build when I want to build? Okay, so now we've narrowed in what area we should think about what size of property. So the one that I get all the time is, hey, I wanna have 20 acres. That's fantastic. What's important to you about 20 acres? And it's, oh, well, I need to be spacious and everything. Wait, well, hey, 20 acres? especially if you've lived on a quarter acre lot, is a lot to take care of. So getting to know exactly what you want for the size of property, and that might take us going out and walking a, a, a five acre, 10 acre lot to get the actual feel for how big of a property you want. But important also is the topography. Um, do you need a south facing property because you do a lot of gardening or you want the snow to melt off soon? Um, are you happy with, you know, really pitched so that you have better views or flat so that uh, it's more private and workable? Very important to talk about that before we go down the line. Mapping systems are extremely helpful to help us find that property without having to go out and walk each time. However, we're still going to be doing some walking. We should know ahead of time what kind of topography we're looking for. Okay. And third Thing to think about here, and we're going to break this one down into three important sections, is utilities. Okay, so what utilities are you going to need or are important to you? Do they exist? And what does it cost if we need utilities in the future? So the three big ones, water, it's kind of important to survival, power, and septic or sewer. So let's break this down one at a time. Water. If there's water on the property, how much is coming out? That's productivity. Or how clean is it? Potability. Um, so we can do testings around that once we're under contract. Uh, but if there is no water, we need to be looking around at local wells, how deep they are, because we can kind of estimate about how much a well is going to be once we get it in before we ever go look at the property or write an offer. Because if all your local wells are right around 200 feet, we can guesstimate price per foot, which whatever that average is at the time, and your static costs. So you're, you've got you know your your compre your pump, uh, all the wiring, the the wellhead itself. That's one static cost, and then the depth is price per foot. So we can kind of get a better idea. Of course, during our due diligence, we want to confirm that. Second is power. So if there's not power on the property already, how much is it gonna to cost to come in? Because it's gonna be more expensive to drag it a mile than it is gonna to be to drag it a quarter mile. So part of that is gonna be finding where the property, or excuse me, the power is, and how much it would be to, to bring it in. We can also talk to the local utility companies and get estimates around that to confirm that our cost is not gonna to be too high. Last is septic. So we got water in, now we need to get rid of the water. And we're either gonna do that via septic or sewer. A lot of the remote rural areas that we're looking at are gonna be septic. Uh, if you're looking in town at a piece of property, quarter acre, half acre, there's a good chance that you're gonna be on sewer, okay? So if you've got sewer lines there already, uh, maybe there was an existing structure there or something, you may wanna have those scoped to check out to make sure that it works as well as septic. If there's septic on the property already, we may want to have that drained and inspected to make sure that it's doing its job. If there's not septic there or sewer there, we need to look at how much it would cost. If you're in a city lot, there's going to be a sewer hookup fee. Same thing with the water line. If you've got water uh, at the property line, there's going to be a hookup fee. Uh, how much is that cost? And if you don't have septic there already, we're probably gonna do a site evaluation. 
uh, commonly known as a perk test around here. So we're going to have someone come out, dig a hole, and Panhandle Health, who oversees the septic, is going to come out and tell us whether or not we can put septic on there. And if we can put septic on there, will it require a proprietary system? So you're average septic system may be one cost, but if it requires a proprietary system, because you've got higher water tables in the ground or different soil types, blah, 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 your septic cost can go up. So it could double or triple. And we should know that prior to closing on the property. A lot of information here, and that's why it's so important to have these conversations so that we can have questions around it. If we haven't sat down already for a consultation to buy vacant land, I'd love to be your resource. Hit me up. I'd love to be the guide that you go to and answer some more of these questions and help you find your perfect piece of vacant land. Thanks for listening. If you've lasted this long, please smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, because there's always content like this that I'm putting out to help my clients. BK knows the way.